We're here with Team 6443 Aimbot at the Wilsonville event. Uh, and they have a really cool robot, really fast cycler, and a really unique climber that we're gonna learn more about on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So the first thing we're going to start with is the shooter on the bot. Uh, if you notice, there are the shooter wheels up here. They are run on a two to one abduction from these Neos and we use four Neos to power um, the shaft, two on each side. This helps with our spin up time to make it as minimal as possible and also voltage draw. The next thing on our um, shooter assembly is the indexer, which is here, run off of two Neos, one right here and one on the back over here. And then we have beam brake sensors here and on one on the other side, just to identify that we have a note. The next thing we're gonna do is look down at the intake. So our intake is run off of poly belt rollers. Um, these rollers allow the belts to make sure they don't slip off from the crown pulleys and also just have a really good grip on the note and make sure we um, pick it up very fast. And we also have beam brake sensors on the intake too to make sure we um, pick up the note and have the bot be able to um, know where the note is. We very specifically knew that structural integrity of an under the bumper intake would be tricky. So we have these support beams inside that are actually part of the drivetrain that are extra support. So we haven't had any crushing of it. Of it. Um, yeah. And then underneath the robot, underneath the bumpers, if you look here, you can see a polycarb skirt that goes all the way around our robot, except for directly in front of the intake. That way, when we run into notes at an angle that is not the perfect angle for the intaking, it just bops it away instead of getting it stuck underneath our wheels. That's good. All right, next thing to talk about is the climber. This is the thing we get asked the most questions about because uh, it is so wonky. So each of these big loops here are actually fiberglass rods that we have encased in shrink wrap. And uh, that keeps them from splintering. So it's basically a giant passive spring. And then each of them has a winch mechanism that's underneath here. You can kind of see the rope tying in there. Uh, each is run on a 15 to one geared down Neo and those two together pull up the entire robot. The hooks are a pretty standard hook design with a slot in them to lock onto the chain. And then with rigidity of the actual fiberglass rod itself, we have these wedges down at the bottom with a polycarb lock on top here that keeps them from swinging around as much. And this wedge also pushes up the angle of the fiberglass rod itself to make sure that we can achieve harmony climb with other robots. So we have a whole sequence with the pivot as well to move it into a position where we can reach underneath the chain and then it swings up to a horizontal or vertical position that when it climbs up the stage, then it hangs at the right angle. So we are not touching the ground. So Sean, if you want to raise it. Climb her up. As you can see, it's about a two second climb from ground to all the way up in the air. Uh, and it's about six seconds if we're driving up and climbing on our own. And then focusing more on the software aspects of the robot. So this robot really makes use of every sort of autonomous feature we can get. We wanted to make driving as simple as possible. So everything on the robot is mapped to as few buttons as possible for the driver. So first I'll talk about our autonomous period. So uh, we use a uh, choreo pathing for our autonomous period, which is um, a trajectory generator that uses numerical optimization to make it so that um, each module can like achieve the path. And this is superior to Path Planner in many ways because um, it means that you are more likely to track your path accurately. And we found that using this um, ability, not only are our paths faster because they've been optimized, but we've also been able to track paths much better starting from the get-go. So we don't have any, we've saved a lot of time having to tune autos over and over again. We can just draw it and it like all works straight out of the box. And we combine that with Path Planner to create our auto sequences. And that auto sequences are powered by odometry, which is great, but that slips over time. So we have three cameras on the bot. There's one in the front here, 
And then there's two April tag cameras in the back on this side that are constantly using April tags to update our pose for the robot. And all of this combined kind of keeps our auto really on track, on point, make sure we get as consistent as possible and whatnot. And then here we also have a note detection camera that points at the ground and we use that to detect where notes and then we will uh, automatically pivot towards the note so that um, the uh, intake is as simple as possible from the driver perspective. And then these cameras also, because we know we're on the field at all times, will um, enable us to automate a lot of the shooting parts of our robot. So like, for example, from the driver's perspective, all they have to do is run up an intake. And then when they come back, they can just hold one button and our robot will auto lock onto the speaker in terms of aiming. And then this pivot will also automatically track and all of that is happening dynamically. So they can just hold it as it comes in and it will perfectly track the speaker until the shoot button is hit. And finally, one very unique thing about our system is that for these cameras, we um, created a custom camera calibration system so that our pose accuracy would be more accurate. So Photon Vision Calibration uses the Mr. Cal backend, which is great, but it's highly integrated with um, Photon Vision. And we found that the results from it weren't as good. So we've created a custom backend with Mr. Cal and recorded video, and we found much better results. So with the Photon Vision system, this is a reference calibration from the Photon Vision documentation. You can see that it'll create a lens model where you're roughly about one pixel off depending on your reprojection, which directly translates to, okay, your pose is gonna be maybe a few centimeters off from where it actually is. And so we created a backend with Mr. Cal that um, when we actually calibrate, you can see that it's much deeper colors, it's greater. And if you look at the numbers specifically, we're down to 0 0.02 pixels of reprojection error. So we've achieved improvements of over 50 times compared to a standard photon vision calibration. And then we also created software that will take this like custom backend and we'll import it into photon vision so that instead of having to write a whole custom vision system to make advantage, we can take advantage of pre-existing software that other people have already developed while making our systems better. And uh, we've observed that using the system has um, increased our pose accuracy by over 50% on the field. That is an awesome robot. That is some awesome code. Uh, and it's really been a joy to watch this robot at competition uh, this weekend. So good luck for the rest of the event. And I hope to see this robot uh, again at future competitions. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.